Your hands are your tools. This is how you interact with the world. Your mind can have plenty of ideas, but unless your hands connect to the real world, those ideas will stay there. So these are our tools. These are the tools from ancient times. If you wanted to make a fire, if you wanted to plant, if you wanted to hold your baby, if you wanted to heal, and many healers here know the energy that comes out of your hands. So without our hands, we can't, we have a brain, we have a spirit, but we can't do anything on the earth with other people. We can't make, we can't create, we can't be, you know, the imitators of God to create without our hands. These are our tools. And there are more nerve endings on our hands than in anywhere else on the entire body. So all of our thoughts, all of our desires, all of our, everything that comes through the brain travels down through the hand and shows up on the hand. Now, in palmistry, there's many different aspects. There's the structure of the hand. There's the structure of the fingers. There's the lines. Uh, there's the mounds. There's the psychic aspect, because, as I'm sure everybody here knows, um, we pick up that energy. And when you hold someone's hand, when I'm doing palmistry and I hold their hand, I, I mean, I get so much. I get so much from that person. So all of these aspects are part of palmistry. And the other very interesting thing about palmistry, it's very ancient. In every civilization they have looked at it. They have found uh, hands on caves, palms on caves. And um, modern palmistry really dates back to the 1800s. There were two Frenchmen, both who uh, fought with Napoleon. Uh, who studied palmistry in depth and brought together the ancient Egyptian and the uh, gypsy uh, various aspects and wrote two very fine books. One wrote it about the shape of the hand and the other wrote it about the, um, the lines. Uh, in the 1800s, there was a great magi magician and he called himself Olympus Levy. He took a Hebrew name. He was not Jewish, but he took a Hebrew name because he was a great study of the Kabbalah. And he uh, wrote a lot about the tarot and all of the, uh, after the French Revolution, you had kind of this flowering of the ancient studies. And so one of these was palmistry and he told uh, one of these fellows, de Baroles, that he needed to combine the Kabbalah with palmistry. The interesting thing about the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah supposedly was the oral message that was given Moses on the mount. The written message, the Ten Commandments, but the oral message, the mysticism, came uh, at that moment, according to tradition, uh, directly to Moses and then was passed on down over the generations. At the light, which we have in so many traditions, that the light abounded everywhere before the creation and that it was held in a vessel. And then when the Big Bang happened, the vessel was broken to millions of pieces. That each of those that pieces is called a shard of glass. And that for uh, creation to come back, for the Garden of Eden to come back, for us to get back to where the lamb lies down with the lion, for the messianic time, each of us has a specific shard of glass that we are put to put into the vessel, to put it back, and that's called tekun. And so in palmistry, we can see what is our particular path. You know, according to the Mahayana Buddhists, it doesn't matter if you reach Buddhahood if no one else is there. <laughs> what good is it to be a realized being if everyone else is suffering? So we all have our specific shard of glass or a specific path, and that is in our palm. Uh, there's another, the latest palmistry is uh, dermoglyphics where they study the fingerprints and they look to see on the fingerprints uh, what is your life purpose. And each different, each individual, which is so interesting because as we know, every fingerprint is different. Now how did they know that? How did they know that they weren't just like five times the fingerprints? Um, actually, in ancient China, the, um, the potters 
used to put their fingerprint, their thumbprint, and how, that's how they identified it. And so many people began to think, is that really true, that every fingerprint is different? And so Scotland Yard, around the turn of the century, went into their jail popula population, this is how we know every fingerprint is different, and took the fingerprints of all their prisoners and discovered at that moment that every fingerprint is different. So we each have a different mission on our lives. Now, if you read the old books, and I brought a couple of old books uh, from the turn of the century on palmistry. Some of them say, death by the scaffold, murder in a dark alley. I mean, <laughs> very, very interesting. Uh, but it's true in palmistry, you see both the difficulties and the special um, signs. And that's what we need in life to get us going. Sometimes we need the kick of the pants. And sometimes we need a special blessing that will inspire us. So we have both of those things in our hands.